hello everybody uh, welcome back to this online series of lectures uh, for behavioral sciences for third year mbbs uh, today we are going to discuss psychosocial aspect of pain uh, in relation to our physical as well as mental health uh, here we will discuss what are those aspect uh, what are those factors which are directly related to our physical as well as mental health when we uh, consider pain uh, pain um, could be uh, due to any reason uh, it uh, can be from accident uh, some other kind of trauma uh, some physical ailment uh, neurological disorder uh, likewise uh, uh, during uh, any type of terminal illness uh, where palliation or palliative care is necessary uh, one of the most important aspect uh, to consider during palliative care is pain management uh, specifically uh, in terminally ill patient who are battling with cancer so these are different aspect we will uh, consider different factors uh, to begin with <coughs> Uh, we need to consider certain factors what are those factors that influence pain um, it could be perception of pain it could be the interpretation of pain it could be the intensity of pain these are uh, multiple factors so uh, first of all intensity of pain if uh, by origin pain is very severe uh, sharp penetrating then uh, definitely the intensity of that pain is increased meaning of the pain to the individual as we all know there are certain factors uh, which modify our perception of pain if we talk about certain religions uh, certain spirituals uh, therapies there are uh, some tendencies to incur pain on oneself Uh, they invite pain on themselves they actually inflict painful stimuli on against their bodies uh, and obviously they have different meaning for pain as compared to an ordinary person uh, who just got injured and feeling a very severe pain uh, that is uh, that pain has different connotation different meaning for that specific individuals so that is very important Uh, how actually we are interpreted interpreting the pain this is a second uh, factor that influence pain perception personality traits of individuals uh, obviously there are certain types of personalities uh, which are more prone uh, for painful stimuli for example dependent personalities obsessional personalities uh, are certain narcissistic personalities uh, these these personality traits are more vulnerable to painful uh, experiences to painful stimuli as compared to there are certain uh, borderline personality disorder uh, if you get if you, if you quote that example now it is proven when borderline personality uh, patient inflict painful stimulus on his or her self actually it gives great amount of players for example they tend to cut their wrist uh, or they cut their uh, skin uh, at some uh, elsewhere actually what they feel that is player it is now proven uh, we have uh, sufficient data to prove that but that borderline personality uh, patient uh, take great player when they inflict painful stimuli on uh, on their bodies so these are different personality traits uh, if you talk about psychosocial factor at home and at work obviously uh, they have great linkage with our everyday uh, psychosocial um, functioning how we interpret things at home how these are related with um, our workplace workload stressful situation at work load stressful situation during travel when we are commuting between our home and work place so these are different factors which are uh, which come into play uh, in relation to pain 
past psychiatric history for example if there is history of anxiety disorder obsessive compulsive disorder and if there is history of uh, depressive illness in the past uh, this also uh, has significant meaning for a current episode of this pain uh, perception uh, for example <coughs> substance abuse we all know there are certain substance substances which tend to increase mood state in which we are indulging in for example a patient a person is depressed and at that state he just uh, sniffing some drugs especially cannabis then his or her depressed uh, state of mind is further aggravated and vice versa so these are different factors which are uh, uh, directly correlated with perception of pain cultural setting of the patient for example there are certain cultures uh, which actually discourage uh, to uh, express feelings of pain so for example someone is feeling pain in those setting then he or she is compelled to mask his or her painful experience and he or she is compelled not to share what actually she or he is going through so these are different uh, cultural settings we should be sensitized when we are talking about uh, uh, perception of pain experience of pain and other psychosocial uh, factors okay uh, now what could be types of pain broadly speaking there are two types uh, acute pain and chronic pain by definition any pain which tend to settling down within 24 hour that is acute pain and any pain which is um, persistent beyond 24 hour by definition that is chronic pain although uh, this uh, categorization is quite arbitrary uh, and fluid um, one could have acute pain and duration is more than 24 hour and one could have uh, chronic pain but that is more uh, sort of episodic are some uh, other pattern uh, could emerge that uh, acute pain superimposed on chronic pain yes these are different uh, shades of pain we should be aware of uh, them okay um, psychological symptoms of chronic pain now we have uh, entered in the phase when we will discuss chronic pain because uh, as far as acute pain is concerned no doubt there are certain psychosocial psychological reaction to that been true but the more important psychosocial psychological sequelae are related with chronic pain as pain become chronic there are higher chances uh, for psychosocial psychological sequelae psychiatric disorder so what are those symptoms we should be mindful about uh, when we are talking about chronic pain uh, these symptoms may include anxiety depression adjustment disorder or simply some uh, uh, stressful uh, reactions stress related reaction that may include acute stress reaction even post traumatic stress disorder if uh, we are talking about chronic pain uh, disorder definitely we should consider uh, post traumatic stress disorder that could be very uh, likely possibility in that scenario so uh, what are those psychological symptoms of chronic pain chronic pain without a known cause was associated with more depression insomnia loss of libido social withdrawal also there were higher rates of physical abuse family history of psychiatric illness insomnia gas lethargy exhaustion fatigue gas often seen in depression now these three points are very important any pain without a known cause has a trouble for the patient because as soon as we get some painful experience we are feeling some um, painful uh, situation if we have known etiology if we can conclude that this pain is due to certain known ailment certain known injury then what actually it, it is doing actually it is giving a lot of reassurance because 
we now know that we have at least have some idea what is causing pain if we get proper treatment the pain will be mitigated that is basically our thought process but when there is no cause known and we do not know what actually is causing painful experience then that reassurance is simply uh, similarly there are errors of uh, physical abuse when we take a history of those patients who are uh, now feeling chronic pain uh, there is plenty of data we support that these patients have been subject to physical abuse there is family history of psychiatric disorder and personal history of um, multiple psychiatric disorder again uh, the uh, third point is reflecting we just have discussed that there are feelings of insomnia gas lethargy exhaustion fatigue so these are uh, multiple uh, symptoms usually somatic or biological in nature these are also present in uh, chronic pain syndrome specifically if that is associated with depression one thing you must keep in your mind that is mask depression for example you are assessing a patient who is uh, experiencing some kind of chronic pain and now you are evaluating and you just uh, started your mental state examination uh, after history of course but with passage of time you have learned that there are no clear cut uh, symptoms or signs of um, depressive illness for example there is no social withdrawal there is no anhedonia and there is no as such depressed mood no weeping cry patient is not that much hopeless uh, no feelings of uh, pessimistic thought uh, so these are different uh, well known uh, red flag type of symptoms so we are going to discuss common signs of chronic pain what are those uh, different uh, body parts uh usually statistically speaking they reflect a uh, more incidence in terms of pain so what are those areas uh, which usually are linked with chronic pain first of all precordium uh in uh, psychiatric setting chest pain most commonly around uh, precordium area that is most significant for uh, uh two or three reasons first of all um, we must rule out any cardiac pathology whenever there is um, some patient who presents with the history of chest pain or uh, pain around precardial area it is incumbent upon a psychiatrist or any uh, clinician for that matter must rule out cardiac pathology if uh, someone is uh, adamant that uh, he or she knows well that this pain is not due to uh, cardiac pathology without doing proper cardiac workout uh, it is uh, a very serious uh, malpractice misconduct on the part of clinician so first and foremost uh, im- important point is to rule out cardiac pathology whenever there is uh, some chest pain no matter there is history of uh, previous uh, heart attack no matter there is a uh, history of uh, smoking other risk factor whether they are present or not but it is very 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 important to uh, rule out cardiac pathology suppose you have ruled out uh, cardiac pathology and there is no history no uh, other factor and you have investigated there is no uh, such findings on investigation physical examination then you can further proceed but still you should uh, have a suspicion about uh, that chest pain uh, you cannot uh, simply say you have 100% ruled out cardiac pathology at least uh, some suspicion should be uh, in your mind okay uh, now other causes for example uh, panic attack anxiety spell ocd any muscular spasms very important costochondritis it is uh, inflammation of joint between uh, uh, rib bone where cartilage and bone are uh, joining so it is very common for example there is history of flu or other viral illness and after few days patient develop these uh, costochondritis it is very painful the most 
important clinical sign for gastro gastroconditis is that pain worsens with breathing movement and when patient moves his chest due to any reason for example he or she is pulling some weight lifting some weight laying down pushing up like these exercises these movements uh, aggravate uh, this specific uh, chest pain it is very common very penetrating and very excruciating so uh, sometimes patient simply get frightened so one must be very careful when uh, ruling out some pathology in relation to precardium secondly uh, followed by precardium that is pain of genitals genital area is very uh, notorious to have uh, different kinds of pains so again the same principle applies here as we were discussing in precardial pain you must rule out any significant pathology for example uh, varicose vein varicels any testicular tumors uh and likewise uh, testicular torsion is very a serious complication uh, in males and likewise in females pelvic inflammatory disease uh, even uh, <coughs> vaginal candida candidiasis <coughs> must be ruled out vaginal candida candidiasis must be ruled out even then you have safely ruled out by physical examination by involving your uh, gynecological um, uh, fellows and having patient checked up by general surgeon and with investigation like uh, ultrasound and urine analysis and pelvic examination for example there is no uh, etiology found then you can say that that could be due to uh, some psychiatric disorder so that is very important genital and thirdly <coughs> comes face face is very important uh, in relation to uh, chronic pain for example most commonly this pain is uh, associated in the jaw bone uh, temporomandibular joint is very commonly associated with pain uh, lower jaw upper jaw toothache uh, and likewise uh, headache frontal sinuses other sinuses like maxillary sinuses most common referred pain in the area of face that is uh, sinusitis and the and again uh, toothache toothache is very very notorious uh, for its referrals for example patient is having pain in um, some molar tooth pain could be referred behind the ears and likewise ear pain could be referred to any areas and likewise uh, sinusitis pain uh, could be referred to Uh, many different part on the face so one should be very uh, careful when we are evaluating any facial pain so we should be uh, focusing on known pathologies first second point is referred pain we must rule out referred pain and thirdly local pathologies for example dental caries are very known uh, about causing pain uh, likewise uh deviated uh, nasal septal is very uh, uh, commonly associated with pain likewise uh, polyp nasal polyp and pharyngitis tonsillitis all these are very important causing most important is tra- trigeminal neuralgia very excruciating pain and it just uh, shoots like just a, a wave of current patient just describes and usually it is uh, exacerbated by chewing movement even by blow of cold air sudden sound these are different uh, triggering factor which can lead to uh, this pain then again there are few uh, pains for example cluster headache cluster headache usually occurs in males around uh, 30 to 50 years of age and cluster means this headache usually recur in clusters in days in weeks there are known cluster with <coughs> rhinorrhea uh, with the watery eyes and it is uh, a painful situation with uh, reddening of eyes and this uh, other headache which is uh, which should be ruled out that is migraine migraine comes in various uh, varieties there is classical migraine and uh, there is some there are some other non classical variants which could present like facial pain retro orbital pain so one should be very careful when evaluating and thirdly uh, tension type headache uh, headache associated with uh, psychological stresses uh, so so what most important point 
when we are uh, in a situation uh, when we have to rule out when we have to differentiate between whether it is uh, this facial pain is due to migraine cluster headache or it is due to uh, tension type headache one should be uh, clear about s- certain points which are very helpful for example uh, tension type headache usually start from neck it goes towards uh, shoulders and then it move upward on the back of head in contrast to migraine or cluster headache usually migraine and cluster headache are uh, predominantly present on frontal side of uh, head but uh, tension type headache usually uh, occupies a uh, posterior head neck and shoulder one thing second uh, important point to differentiate there for example you take history and patient describes patient uh, says that one good night sleep just relieves headache then it is most likely a tension type headache because cholesterol headache or uh, migraineous headache uh, they are not relieved by good sleep a, a healthy enjoying and peaceful sleep in the night usually does not relieve migraine or cluster headache but it usually relieves tension type headache as the day passes and patient describe that as uh, noon afternoon and in the evening again this posterior uh, sort of pain just get worsening especially it get uh, m- m- most Uh, troublesome in the evening then you must rule out tension type headache right so this is a uh, face cranium we have discussed again back and the back back pain is divided into upper back and lower back upper back we have just discussed lower uh, neck region shoulder region this is most commonly associated with upper uh, back pain uh, pain <clears throat> as as far as uh, lower back pain is concerned again uh, it could be due to a psychological reason true but again <coughs> uh, but again we uh, need to be very careful regarding lower back pathology specifically a uh, lumbosacral region for example we all know Uh, by our anatomical uh, and neurological uh, knowledge that there are certain junction of and exits of nerves most important is uh, sciatic nerve and that why there is one uh, very commonly known pain that is called sciatica so that is basically impingement of uh, vertebral disc against this exiting uh nerves so one should be very careful when uh, assessing these uh, pains specifically one should be care- careful about whether this pain is localized to uh, lower back only lumbosacral region hip region or it is shooting down the leg up till big toe if pain is shooting down for example in posterior thigh in lateral thigh and then in calf muscle and then ultimately to big toe then it is characteristically uh, associated this pattern is characteristically associated with uh, sciatica pain so one should be very careful because its management is totally different and its uh, timely intervention is very different for example patient is not referred to a uh, spine surgeon or orthopedic surgeon there is high chance uh, that this nerve become uh, compromised and further leading to uh, denervation pathology and muscles become permanently damaged and crippling so to save patient from that complication it is very important we timely intervene and we timely refer the patient to concerned doctors okay and then uh, local pathology as far as concerned we must rule out any tuberculosis tb uh, of spine that is called pot disease that is very common in our setting secondly uh, any uh, osteoarthritic pain uh, any uh, any anomaly uh, any uh, arthritic pain due to uh, some uric acid anomalies that must be uh, ruled out and then sir, there are certain uh, autoimmune processes which tend to uh, 
uh, actually uh, densify these vertebral joints and these vertebral joints actually tend to fuse and their mobility is lost that is very important so one should be very careful when evaluating lower back pain uh, one must not take it lightly so that is uh, about some common sense of sides of chronic pain okay <clears throat> now we are going to discuss psychogenic pain disorder so what is, is this is specific disorder even um, it gets mentioned in uh, our main uh, classificatory system like icd uh, 10 or 11 and likewise uh, dsm diagnostic uh, and diagnostic and statistical manual uh, version 5 and there is mention of psychogenic pain disorder what is that like how it could be presenting and what are those different uh, pitfalls uh, clinicians should be aware of when pain and associated symptoms do not fit with any physical or other psychiatric morbidity so for example uh, as in last slide we just discussed different aspect of pain if with a detailed history physical examination and relevant investigation and input of our other colleagues from other disciplines we have ultimately decided this pain has uh, not affiliated with any other known category of etiological factor then we can say this pain is most likely associated with psychiatric morbidity because psychiatric morbidities are very well known causing chronic pain syndrome yeah. So cause is primarily is not known in this theoretically associated with the mechanism called somatization. So it is very important what is somatization. Uh, we should be very careful when we uh, talk about this term because because of two reasons. F first of all, it has stigmatizing potential. When we label someone somatizer or having somatization disorder, it has huge potential of uh, triggering stigma not only in that patient but uh, rather uh, extended family and in that society in generally speaking that is important secondly it needs thoroughly revised strategy therapeutic strategy what are those treatment modalities when we are dealing with somatizers or somatization that is totally different and generally speaking, general physician, internist, medical specialist, or other uh, doctors, non-psychiatric uh, discipline, usually they are not trained to uh, identify somatization and secondly to uh, deal with it and to treat it successfully. So uh, resultantly, these patients have uh, adopted a status of well-known phenomena that is called revolving door patient you see these patient every next week every next month they are just coming in hospital and after one one or two or they are just leaving and uh, then after this process repeats for some time and they have with them such huge files of investigation of multiple tests so these patients are called revolving door phenomena although a bit derogatory but uh, for understanding uh, i think that is important to uh, clinically associate this what, what that uh, phenomena is actually they these patients are just revolving around hospitals and they are not getting remedy they are not getting treatment and it is very miserable uh, situation for them right so uh, we will discuss what is somatization what are the treatment of somatization how somatization is uh, linked with the psychogenic pain disorder also has to do with neurotic or concern attention monitoring of symptoms so these we are just going to discuss what are neurotic concern uh, what are uh, attention of those symptoms which are actually triggering this somatization behavior and monitoring of symptom how patient is monitoring his symptom how family is monitoring uh, uh, their symptom so that we are going to discuss uh, in uh, next uh, slide right triggering this somatization behavior and monitoring of symptom how patient is monitoring his symptom how family is monitoring uh, uh, their symptom so that we are going to discuss uh, in uh, next uh, slide right uh, so 
now we are going to discuss different aspects different implication ramification of somatization behavior and we have uh, tried to mention it under beha pain behavior or uh, sick role so these are uh, are different terminologies but actual uh, psychopathology is same so what it could be continuing functional disabilities when we say functional word we actually saying two things first of all we could not find we could not find right there could be a reason there could be an etiology but we could not found uh, any uh, specific etiological factor with diligent history taking physical examination and relevant investigation we are just unable to uh, find any um, etiological factor so that is functional in one sense but very important when our non-psychiatric friends use a term this functional they actually mean and they refer whether explicitly or implicitly they actually say try to uh, say okay these patients are malingerer malingerer mean they are actually feigning the symptom metrology knowingly they actually know that these patients are not ill but they somehow have learned some symptomatology and now they are feigning so one thing please keep in your mind functional and malingering is quite different things functional means patient is actually ill patient is suffering from uh, some kind of ailment patient is suffering in silence but that is a dilemma the, right now we could not find any cause but patient is suffering that is true illness functional so whenever there is a use of, of term functional one should be careful who is using that what is meant by using this term and what exactly uh, the possibility of different uh, diagnostic uh, differential diagnosis we should consider in final diagnosis so that is one important aspect functional disabilities or use of medication somatization is somatizer patient as i have just mentioned to you these are revolving door patient once they are uh, appearing in medical opd and then they they have been referred to uh, a urological uh, opd then the psychiatric opd and multiple opd so there is high chance of overuse of medication you just see these patients they are carrying huge files huge prescription investigation and huge uh, bag of uh, medicines bottles of medicine they have been using so overuse of medication obviously when there is a repeated referral to other doctors every doctor just tend to write some medication so number of medication uh, is rapidly increasing sleep disturbance somatization uh, somatization is very notoriously linked with sleep disruption decreased social activities these patients just avoid from social responsibilities they escape from their duties even they are not aware of their rights but sometime if they are aware of their rights and responsibilities even then they just they are just unable to carry that out learning to be passive they just become socially withdrawn uh, they are passive they are not interacting with other people they are not engaging in positive activities they are not engaging in uh, so called playable hobbies uh, which they usually uh, have been enjoying uh, in uh, their past but now they are avoiding they are house bound they are sometimes bed bound and they are 24/7 worrying thought about their pain behavior or other uh, somatization uh, complaint right so this is the uh, typical behavior of these patient psychological management of pain what it what are different options we should imply when we are assessing these patient first and foremost is psychosocial assessment especially psychodynamic cognitive factor and environmental factor so psychodynamic what are psychodynamic factors psychodynamic factors are those factors which are actually help which happened in the past long time ago they just happened uh, in the life of patient 
it could be in childhood it could be it could be in the form of upbring, upbringing it could be in the form of early schooling so they just happen now these factors have some bearing on current psychological and mental health of patient these are called psychodynamic we need to actually link between current psychological health mental health of patient with do those uh, past events so these are psychodynamic a cognitive factor whatever right now patient is feeling there are certain cognitive errors which patient tend to develop and we need to uh, first identify then evaluate and restructure Uh, these cognitive errors so what are environmental factor for example what are the conditions of the patient what for example employment education level family network family sport whether patient is married unmarried sibling uh, whether patient uh, patient is only breadwinner for his family so these are multitude of uh, factor whether he is uh, doing some job or not what are financial uh, status of uh, this patient so we need to be very careful when evaluating uh, these thing the psychotropic drugs for example tricyclic antidepressants snri uh ssri pregabalin benzodiazepines so these are multitude of drug again we we should be very careful when we prescribing any drug I repeat, any drug for uh, somatizers or for somatization disorder because there is high chance of dependence of drugs. For example, if we have prescribed any benzodiazepine or, uh, or any anxiolytic, there is high chance because it will uh, it will uh, dramatically improve symptomatology, specifically anxiety related symptom. Patient is uh, usually become hooked on these drugs so, so one should be very careful after uh, good uh, counseling thorough investigation and then we should assess whether we should prescribe any drug or not so these are uh, different aspect what could be psychological intervention what we have actually to offer for the patient relaxation method you all know we have been discussing uh, like pmr opren techniques that is a uh, a bit beyond your uh, scope but uh, uh, as as far as operant conditioning operant technique is concerned usually uh, it appears in your exam either in uh, supplementary or in annual so you should be uh, knowing what what are different tenets of uh, operant conditioning activity schedule Uh, graded activity exercise contingency management medication reduction training so these are uh, clustered under the heading of operant technique then uh, cognitive strategies uh, uh, as i have just told you actually cognitive structuring restructuring that is social skills what are those social skills coping strategies approach uh, they should be a very careful uh approach <clears throat> when we are discussing about it uh different aspect right coping strategies coping strategy means problem solving uh there are usually we we have as a human being we have limited faculties to deal with any problem whenever there is a problem we you you um, we can employ two or three strategies for example either we can increase our coping skill either we can solve the problem if problem is solved then there is no issue if problem is unsolvable and it is diff- difficult problem then we have to increase our coping skills so that because problem is not solve uh, solving so we should increase our arsenals psychological arsenals to better cope with uh, that uh, uh, upcoming problem right if a uh, again these two strategies have been failing problem is not solved and you do not uh, have enough uh, time or uh, capacity to build coping strategy then third option is to compromise with that problem and just to buy time so these are different uh, coping strategies i hope uh, we have discussed in detail uh, about these different aspect uh, i think uh, that is uh, very useful uh in next lecture uh, we will uh, see different aspect of managerial and leadership skill right okay thank you uh in next lecture uh, we will uh, see different aspect of managerial and leadership skill right okay thank